All right, testing, audio test. I'm this far from the mic. And I'm this far from the mic. And together we are These, these Fars from, from the mic. mic. Hello, and welcome to what is going to be for now the final entry in the um, the director derby for Edgar Wright. We just finally watched The World's End. I bought it recently. Pro tip, buy your DVDs or Blu-rays after the holiday. Because pre-holiday it was $35. Went in there after it, 15 Yay. Much more pleasant pricing for one movie. So anyway, we watched The World's End. What did you think, Vic? It was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. It's, it's real, uh, real deep. It was pretty <laughs> awesome. There's going to be spoilers throughout this because the ending is kind of the part that's the most, like, it sticks with you, definitely. Yeah. It's in- it's um, interesting to think of how far this movie comes over yeah. its runtime because it has a very long sort of introductory arc before it gets crazy and then it gets really crazy at the yeah. end. So there's some very strong theming in this movie and the first theme that I noticed is repetition which the early part of the movie is like really hammers home repetitiveness because first of all the whole idea is that they're repeating something they did when they were younger. Mm. It was like you know, this this pub crawl that they had done once that he wanted to relive. And he goes to, like, he goes to every single one of them. And you see him, you know, give, like, the same spiel to each guy so that they'll all get on the team. Then they start going to the pubs, and each pub is exactly the same because they've all been homogenized. So, or as they called it, Starbucked. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so they, they go to these pubs, they're all the same. And, like, this is, like, the first almost, like, probably first over a half hour of the movie is just yeah. like repetitiveness to really hammer this point home and i think it's a message on two levels both with the pubs it's obviously about the homogenization of of stores and culture but in the terms of the story it's also about just the repetitiveness of life human nature yeah. you know things are repetitive the movie doesn't make that much of a commentary on like you know, routine or anything, but it does make a commentary on just general human lack of lack of knowing what to do with yourself, kind of. I guess. What do you think of the characters? Is there anyone you related to or anything you related to in the movie? Well, the main guy was awesome, obviously. Right. Because he's ridiculous. Yeah. He's uh, definitely fun. I don't know if I can relate to it that much because it's it's about middle-aged men, so it's like... Well, Maybe one day I'll be at that point where that will be the situation. I mean, do you ever feel looking into the future like you're just, like it's this black hole void that you no. don't know what's, no? <laughs> do you think you'll be one of those guys, one of the four friends, and you'll be like a successful guy? Because I could totally see myself being the main dude, but not as yeah. insane. You're more egotistical. So. Right. He reminded me of myself <laughs> in how he. they were like, you're never wrong. Yeah. Because you know, he refused to be wrong, and that's that's very me. He's a definitely a, an interesting and fun character, even though they don't do that much to explore him. Like, you kind of get where he's going to be, like yeah. what his hang-up is going to be from the beginning, you know, that he's never had anything as good as when he was young. You know, that last night spent with his friends before everything fell apart was the last thing that that he enjoyed in life and he's been trying to get himself back together and it just doesn't work and he's like I, I can't I, I need this thing back you know mm. and goes at it with full force the other theme I think the the main message of the movie the way I see it it's kind of about determinism versus free will which is something that I'm very interested in versed in but maybe not determinism versus free will it's more about whether or not free will is important Right? Because the way that the aliens live, they, they say themselves, you know, like, if we homogenized ourselves, if you all cooperated, everyone would be happier. You know, like, mm. the whole, the, the society they're bringing is not, a, is not a bad thing. And if anything, it's the human idea of perfection, right? Like a world of just peace and harmony and global community and everything's connected. And it's everything that should be right with the world. But as humans... We are just contrarian, like, and it's true, like, this is really how humanity is. We refuse to be homogenized. We we want freedom so badly, Mm -hmm. and we don't really know why, but it's a thing we want. And, because, you know, whenever you see, like, a, a, um, 1984, what am I thinking of? Orwellian? 
dystopia. Dystopia. Whenever you see a dystopia, it's always presented as a bad thing. But it doesn't make sense for it to be a bad thing, because the whole point of a dystopia is that everyone thinks the same, but that means they can all work together, you know? Uh-huh. But every, but as humans, we think, oh, that's so boring. I don't want a world where everyone's the same. I want a world where everyone's different, even if it means that we're, we're going to fight and we're going to have wars and all this stuff. Yeah. We think of it as that's what it means to be human, you know? And so, really, this... This movie is relevant to real life. Like, what the aliens are trying to do really yeah. would be... I mean, it was very obvious, obvious right. themes on that part. They, it really would be the perfect way to have a society, but we don't want it, you know? And it was just a, a coming-of-age thing, because it's just like, he had to let go of that childish rebelling against whatever the fuck, you know? But he doesn't. They don't Yeah, but that's the it. point in the end. It's because nobody wants to do that. Right. Everyone wants to keep that, that bit of the themselves, freedom. The, the freedom of yeah. being young. But his, all of his friends had given that up and just become regular fucks like the aliens, right. pretty much. Um, because that's the thing. None of them really seemed like they were unhappy with their lives, you know, except for yeah. the one guy reveals at the end that, you know, things have not been going they, well for him. But they they became generics. Right. I don't and really, the two guys who were happy with their lives are the ones that died and became True. aliens. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Because the one guy had his hang-up with the girl, and then, yeah, the other two had their So the ones hang-ups. who weren't satisfied are the ones who... Who, who, who didn't certain, become aliens. That is a good point. The yeah. two guys who were, who were pretty happy with their lives were just like, what And the one guy, I mean, his only hang-up was beating up the bully, and then he beat up the bully and became an alien. So yeah. it was like... That's an interesting point. Yeah. They all they were all defeating their demons and all that. Hmm. And, you know, th- th- some of the same stuff as in the other movies, just yeah. from a... The characters are older perspective. Right. It's, uh, it's definitely like... Shit, what am I trying to think of? Like, you know, the, 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 what's the fat dude's name? Do you remember any other names? No. Nick Frost's character. <laughs> yeah. Nick Frost's character makes the point that he's like, you know, we don't stop fighting. That's what, you know, that's what makes us human. And he's like, mm. you know, even though my wife has left me and everything, I've never stopped fighting to do the, the one thing I wanted. And the main character's like, well, this is all I have, you know, so I'm not mm. going to stop fighting for it either. So, and that's sort of. Like, that is kind of the embodiment of all human conflict, if you really think about Dude, it. Dude, it's, is... it's the anti-spirals. It's like... Right. This, it's a classic story. Well, I mean, I mean specifically the fight between the two of them. Yeah. Like, is, it's actually both of them being incredibly human, but that's what makes them fight. Is that, like, all of our wars come from irreconcilable differences. It's mm-hmm. where we both very strongly want one thing, and we refuse to give in. And so, you know, the one guy very strongly wants his life back together. The other one very mm. strongly wants his old life, and the two of them have to fight over it. And that's why they're not a perfect society. But neither of them's willing to give up their side, you yeah. know? So they are both completely human, you know? I definitely knew the from the beginning that it was going to end up as those two duking right. it out at the end because they were the best friends who hated each other. Right. So I guess the idea of this movie is that humanity is all about having something to strive for. Mm-hmm. And not being satisfied, not being willing to give in, because that's like you know, as a human being, I always feel like I'm I'm never gonna be satisfied. Like that's that's yeah, that's what feels human to me. Because I can't imagine any point where I'm going to be like, oh, this is fine. I'll just be stagnant from now on. You know, yeah. it's it's never gonna feel that way. Mm-hmm. I'm never gonna be like, oh, my life is so perfect and it's just gonna ride out for the rest of my life. You know, there's always gonna be something I have to fight for, whether it's like, you know, whether it's, like, Nick Frost, who <coughs> is fighting in his progress, or if it's, like, um, Simon Pegg's character, who's, you know, who has nothing except the will to fight, and that's all that keeps him going, is that he has to fight. I love the scene where they get into a drunken, belligerent argument with the alien hive mind, and it goes, yeah, fuck it, amazing. it just leaves. And then it completely erases humanity. But that's the thing, is that, like, the only way for humanity to work is is like that you know where we all have to band together in that kind of setting like because we could have a functioning world if we didn't have all the things that we do to to kill our world right Mm. if we weren't overpopulated if we were you know living organically if we were all working as a community then we'd be able to work better as humans. And that's why almost any post-apocalypse story always is like this, where we regress to a, to a, a dark yeah. age, but it ends up being an age where it's more peaceful because we 
you know, we kind of have to band together. Sort of. I don't know. But at the end, yeah, they're kind still of still fighting. A, a bar fight right. with races. But they're still so fighting like, for a peaceful world, you know. Yeah. They're still saying, like, oh, there's still bad shit out there, but he's trying to fight now for improving yeah. the world. It's an interesting movie. It's full of a lot of ideas and not a lot of conclusions. That's what makes it yeah. interesting. Whereas I think Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz have a little bit more conclusive endings. But even then, none of them really is that, like oh, everything's right now, and, you know, and life mm. is now good. It's more like, well, we keep living. You know, like, we got through that. We're still alive. This one is especially intense. We got, yes. like, the zombie apocalypse thing <laughs> is one thing, but everything goes kind of back to normal other than they have yeah. zombies. And this one, it's like, fucking, they're back in the dark ages, but Amazing. they still keep going, they still <laughs> keep living, and it's like, yeah, so I guess it's like the final... The finality of the the trilogy of of human existence, um, the three mm. flavors Cornetto trilogy, incidentally, is what it's called. Definitely continuing themes. I feel like you know uh, the main guy in this is like, if Sean and Sean of the Dead never grew up, right. he would have ended up like this guy by the time he was middle aged. Yeah, and like in in Hot Fuzz, there was also the theme of homogeny. You know, it was yeah. for the, everything was for the greater good. And killing anything that, you know, that worked against the greater good, and that's what this movie is about. But then mm-hmm. they they push home the point of yeah, and how many people actually fit into your structure? You know, like what three? Way yeah. to go! You know, like <laughs> clearly it's humanity cannot. Mess. You can't. You just can't do it to humans. You can't because again, we represent that stuff as dystopian. We yeah. see that as a bad thing. Even though logically, if we were beings of pure logic like the aliens are, we'd be down for it. We'd be like, "Oh, no more suffering and pain. All we got to do is just be like everybody else and everything's good." Sure, sign me up. It makes perfect sense, but we would mm. never do that. I would never do that. Would you do that? I don't know. Do you think if they said, "All right, we're going to take away everything that all your free thought, everything that makes you you and you're going to be part of a hive mind." Would you really sign up for it? Would it be fun? <laughs> But you won't, you just be like everybody else. I don't know. You don't know? If everyone's awesome, I don't know. I don't think I, I need can a do brochure. it. <laughs> because it would get rid of everything I care about, you know? Yeah. Like, I wouldn't care about the same things. I wouldn't be the same person, you yeah. know? And, and individuality is something we pride ourselves on so much as humans. Like, we really put a lot of like emphasis on our individuality other things to comment on great action scenes yeah those were funny definitely compared to because the, the other movies didn't really i mean hot fuzz had action i felt like scenes, there was definitely there had to be some sort of symbolism in those action scenes with these middle-aged people completely being badasses and whooping right. ass especially with nick frost character being the best friend who was protecting you know what's simon, peg. simon peg the whole time uh-huh. and i was like it, it's almost like that that is how he sees his best friend as this unstoppable badass who is just like he demolished everything he fucked up those <laughs> aliens and it's like there's no reason he should be that badass he just was like magically i was like there has to be you know there there's something behind that i don't know like all i know is the action scenes are great hot fuzz we remember we commented the action scenes kind of look like shit they're mm. cool, but they kind of look like shit because they're going for the Michael Bay look. Yep. This one is way more clean, cleanly shot, great well choreographed. Yeah, great choreography. They made the aliens super squishy so that they could have all this like really senseless, yep. awesome violence. Because there's no way hilarious, exaggerated violence. Right, it's almost impossible for the humans to lose. And like you said, they only ever lose when they're satisfied. You know, yeah. like it's more of a symbolic loss than an actual getting overpowered kind yeah. of thing. And so, they, they, the humans, despite being outnumbered, are almost always OP in the fights. And the, the violence feels really awesome because of it. Yeah, you know, they get to do all kinds of crazy shit. head explosions and all that. And, uh, I don't know, what else would you say about it? Anything else that, that stands out of note? I don't know. It's just that the bromance was a lot of cool. Mm. So. Like, yeah. Altogether, we have now completed the main filmography of Edgar Wright. We did not cover Fistful of Fingers, because that was his debut when he was like 20, yeah. and even he's like, yeah, you don't really need to watch that movie. Um, we could watch Spaced, but I don't think you're going to want to, because it's a whole show. Mm. 
Um, I might watch no Spaced and movies. maybe I'll say something about it later or something. But yeah, no. we're done with Edgar Wright. So, Yay. how would you rank his films? It's pretty good. Pretty. Liked them pretty, all? Pretty good, yeah. What order would you put him in from favorite to least Don't favorite? Don't let me do that. I think mine would be. I don't fucking know. Shaun of the Dead, then Scott Pilgrim. I heard then, Scott Pilgrim. Then. It's hard to choose between Hot Fuzz and The World's End. I think I'd have to pick The World's End just because the themes were more interesting to me. Yeah. And it's just gorgeously shot. Like, holy fuck. But, um. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Who are we going to cover next? Are we still going to don't, keep doing director derbies? Don't, uh, don't put the pressure. You on wanted to do Stanley now. Kubrick, I guess. Yeah. We There's can, also we can Kubrick it up. Kubrick is uh, could be fun. It would be really intense. But there's probably a lot to analyze. So yeah, yeah maybe we'll do Kubrick. Maybe this will be the yeah. last director derby, first and last. Who knows? Um, it was fun to do it though, and yeah, I'm glad yeah, I got yeah. to see all of Edgar Wright's films in a in a critical light. So, triple plus scores to all of them from me. I yeah, think, probably no, maybe triple plus scores to to to, to two, and then double plus to the others. It doesn't matter. That's the end. See you later. Yeah.